peace with joy. They're telling them, you're going to prison, things are going to get bad. By, earth, by the world standards, everything is going to fall apart for you. And he says, that's right. And it's the will of God. And it brings me great joy that I don't resist it. He didn't marry God for his money. He didn't marry him because he can heal. He's not in relationship with him because he can make him financially prosperous or because he can deliver him a future that he thought he ought to have. He took God for who he is, recognized who he was, and said, God, you're the one that's all powerful. Father, you're the one whose thoughts are higher than mine, and my life belongs to you. You do with it as you choose. You cause me to live as long as you say live. You cause me to come home when you say come home. Now on that note, I'd like to back up just a second, if we could, to the young man who falls out of the window. Paul falls on this guy and he prays for him. <coughs> now, I don't know if this guy was a believer or not yet. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you this. If I fall out on this floor with a heart attack and I'm not breathing, don't you dare do CPR. Now, there's a reason for that. My Bible tells me that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I can just imagine the scene. I take my last breath and I look up and there's Jesus. And standing right next to him is the brand new 2019 body with hair. 50 pounds lighter, no sickness, every inclination to sin removed, love for everybody, the capacity to do God's will perfectly. And I'm getting ready to put this one in the trash and I'm gonna accept that body, I'm looking at Jesus, everything's great. And then I wake up on the ground you're liable to get punched. <laughs> but that's going to be Dan over you, see? You're welcome. <laughs> I just couldn't imagine that. Well, anyway, a little side point there. Okay? But none of these things move me, <laughs> nor do I count my life dear to myself. I can't resist it. You know what New York CPR is, don't you? like this. Get up, you're gonna die. <laughs> okay, anyway. But none of those things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed, now I know that, uh, that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God will see my face no more. This is the last visit. Therefore, I testify to you to this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. I gave you the whole body of scripture. I gave you everything that God's taught me. I've told you the truth. And whatever you choose to do with it, it's, it's to your credit if you follow it. It's not blood on my hands if you don't. Mm -hmm. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, not sparing the flock. You know what Paul taught them? You know what the principal job of a shepherd is? It's not meetings with boards. 
It's not deciding how the parking lot gets cleaned. It's not doing any of those things. The principal job of a shepherd is to be sure that you give the whole counsel of God through his word. That's the job. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Now what's he talking about? Men sneaking in, speaking perverse things. You know, brothers and sisters, there are people who teach that it is never God's will that you be sick. There are people who teach that it's never God's will for you to be unhappy, that you have power within, God's power within, and that you should be able to control every circumstance of your life. You know, from what we just heard come out of Paul's mouth, that he knows he's going to Jerusalem in chains, that he's going to come out of there that way. And the fact that he understands that trouble is there, it's a real shame that Paul could not have attended a few services in one of those churches. He never would have made a comment like that. He would simply have summoned the power within. And he wouldn't have had any trouble at all. He'd have never wound up in chains. He'd have never had any trouble. Of course, he would have had to hear the part that said, if you just had enough faith, Paul, you wouldn't have gone through all that stuff. None whatsoever. Wow. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver, gold, or appeal, or apparel. Every time I hear a radio preacher say, you have to know how desperate our situation is, and if you don't send money today, that we're gonna have to cut a few radio stations off the air. I've got one response to that. Where God guides, he provides. And if that's what he does, that's what he does. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. Paul was a tent maker. He followed that Jewish custom that no matter how high and mighty you thought you were, education-wise and everything else, you learned to trade. And that you be prepared, if things don't work out well, you go get a job, and that's what you work. And you continue to teach, and you continue to do those things. And if that's what you have to be, if you have to be bivocational, if God sent you someplace, that's what you do. You'll get a job, and that's where, how you do it. God knows we could certainly use men of God today that aren't after anybody's goal and aren't looking to make it, make themselves rich. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, I'm going to say something here that I really believe in, and I've practiced it most of my Christian life because I was fortunate enough to be sitting in a service where as a young Christian, a preacher didn't pull any punches, and he made this clear. There's all kinds of places where you can go where you can be beat to death over paying tithes. Okay, and tithes are a good thing. But rarely do you hear a message that says, you don't have your budget together unless your budget, as you are able, includes something extra, that you work with your hands for something extra, no matter how small, to be prepared to help somebody that's got less than you've got. 
And it doesn't make any difference how little your income or how, long, how little money you've got. If you pray and ask God who it is he would like you to help with a portion of what you've got, I don't care if it's a sandwich. It doesn't make any difference. And your finances are out of whack. And if you're wondering why your finances are in a mess, there's generally a pretty simple answer for that. For a time, it can be because God has put you in a place where he's doing something in your life. More than likely, Take a good look and see where you're at as far as your tithes. Quickest way to go broke, stop taking care of God's house. The second, figuring that you have no obligation above and beyond that to help somebody else when they need it and not necessarily through the church. Not necessarily somebody who goes to your church. It's the small thing that you can do by the works of your hands, by what God's put into your hand, whatever you have to give to make their struggle a little easier, no matter how small, to be prepared and willing to do it. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. I guess he had a relationship with these people. They loved him and he loved them. Sorrowing most of all for the, for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more, and they accompanied him to the ship. Seeing as how we've just read about somebody falling asleep and dying in the floor from a message that went too long, we're going to close it up for today. I feel pricked in my heart, and so I'm going to obey that. Amen? Amen. Father, please help us, like Paul, to take a really good look at our relationship with you and find out just how much of that relationship is based on your utility to us and not so much on what you've already done for us. And just how much our circumstances around us have an impact on our relationship with you. Lord God, help us to be a people that are absolutely sold out for Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.